Meet Henry David Thoreau. Actually, never mind this. Meet Thoreau, an American essayist, philosopher, and naturalist who opened the eyes of many of his readers. Although not literally, Thoreau's distinguished writing style, a style that reflected transcendental beliefs and simple living in natural surroundings, influenced many of his readers by giving them a completely different perspective of the world. Now meet Ralph Waldo Emerson, a man known as the father of American transcendentalism. Within Thoreau's book entitled Walden, Chapter 4 Sounds not only introduces a variety of his own transcendental ideas, but also reflects many of Emerson's. Thoreau is known for stating the quote, Our life is frittled away by detail. Simplify, simplify. This idea is echoed at the start of Sounds as Thoreau begins to discuss literature and how it takes away from reality. Although this may be perceived as being ironic, as Thoreau can be classified as a writer himself, he reinstates his beliefs on the importance of nature and reality as he states that, I did not read books the first summer, I hoed beans. As Thoreau departs himself away from books, he allows himself to live a life that is farther away from conformity through society's beliefs and more toward nature's simplicity through reality. As Thoreau listens to the chirping and singing, he states, The natural day is very calm and will hardly reprove his indolence. By personifying nature and classifying it as being quite simple and lazy, he emphasizes nature's ability to make people carefree and delightful. Thoreau's reference to nature is abruptly interrupted by the passing of a locomotive. While Thoreau attempts to praise these locomotive workers for their hard work and determination, this is overshadowed by the realization of an upcoming destruction of Thoreau's natural world. Thoreau criticizes the rise of industrial America and the downfall of American people by stating, Up comes the cotton, down goes the woven cloth, up comes the silk, down goes the woolen, up comes the books, but down goes the wit that writes them. Sharing Emerson's beliefs that men must be self-reliant and nonconformists, Thoreau believes that these working men toil under false assumptions and are blind to the best parts of life. Thoreau emphasizes the importance of viewing reality and nature by stating, I will not have my eyes put out and my ears spoiled by its smoke and steam and hissing. Following these wholesome and fulfilling sounds that reflects Thoreau's alertness and pleasure with nature, he hears a more dismal sound. Thoreau interprets the noise as being a sound that represents the stark twilight and unsatisfied thoughts which all have. In regard to Thoreau, most of his unsatisfied thoughts most likely relate to a departure from nature. For a typical person, the American dream often relates to becoming rich and famous. As for Thoreau, his dream mainly surrounds the ability to have personal freedom and everlasting happiness. Thoreau would likely criticize a typical American's dream by stating that their capability to become rich and famous and be individualized from society is continuing to dwindle as society continues to conform. Throughout Sounds, Thoreau presents how solitude is able to break himself from the civilized world and allow him to become a happier person. As Thoreau states that his living allowed himself to have no path to the civilized world, the sad and shocking truth is that this way of living is now nearly impossible to recreate with today's increase of industry and technology. Breathe.
created using Powtoon.